Hello, my YouTube friends. Today, I'm going to show you how to use OBS to broadcast to Microsoft Teams to create a much more dynamic broadcast using a PC. So let's get to it. <laughs> If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. Microsoft Teams is a very powerful conferencing software and it's being used more and more by educators and businesses to teach and grow their business during these interesting times we're living through. Especially for educators, many are looking for ways to create a dynamic learning experience that entertains and educates at the same time. And this is where using OBS gives you so many options. You can add media elements like video and audio, multiple cameras, share your desktop application windows like PowerPoint, or even a browser source. You can add overlays like lower thirds for really powerful webinar presentations that'll just make your broadcast look that much more professional. And it's really easy to add OBS to Microsoft Teams on your PC, so let's dive in and I'll show you how to do it. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that your organization is already using Microsoft Teams and you have it installed on your machine. You can install OBS Studio with the link in the description. It's a standard install and it's free to anyone. Once OBS is installed, we need to add a plugin that's going to allow us to use it as a camera in Microsoft Teams. To do this, first we go to this site here and download the NDI plugin for OBS. On this page, you want to scroll down and find the Windows installer. You can choose either the installer or the zip file. It really makes no difference. I just download the installer and once it's on my computer I just browse to the location of that installer and I'm gonna double click it and run it now I'm gonna have all kind of weird glitches and errors when I'm doing this because it's already on my machine and I'm using OBS to actually record the screen so it's running and on my machine already so I'm gonna be skipping a lot of this but it's gonna go smoothly for you if you don't have it on there or if you're not running OBS and you shouldn't have any problems you just agree to it, install it to the default location and all that kind of stuff, and you'll be all set. Once it's finished, if you did not have it on your machine before, you should definitely click restart your machine. The links for all these applications are in the description. You won't have to hunt around for them. You can just click them and it will take you right there. The next one we're going to install is the NewTek NDI. It takes the NDI source that comes out of OBS and converts it into something that you can use as a camera source in Microsoft Teams. And it's really easy to install. We're just gonna go to the New Tech NDI webpage, and we're gonna click on NDI here in the menu, and we're gonna select NDI Tools, and we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of this page, and click NDI Tools for Windows. Then you just have to fill out this brief summary, tell them you're not a robot, and click Submit. Once you click submit, it comes up with this little message here and you just click the highlighted link button and it's going to download the NDI tools to your download location. Then all we have to do is browse to that location, double click it and run it and accept the agreement, click next. And you're probably going to want to make sure you have full installation selected. But the most important piece of this is the virtual input. You want to make sure that's selected. If you want your virtual input to always be running, you can click Run at Windows Start. I do not have it clicked because I like to turn it off and run bare bones as much as possible, especially if I'm editing or live streaming. But you may not be doing that on your machine, so you may not care if it runs all the time. And it's really not a big deal. Once you have everything selected that you need, you can click Next and Install. Once you're finished with that, I highly recommend that you reboot your machine. If you're looking for ways to add things to your OBS broadcast that can really spice it up, like intro cards and exit cards and branded videos and all that kind of stuff, you should definitely check out Envato Placeit. It's unbelievable the kind of things that you can create for your live streams in just a few minutes. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out, and you'll even get a discount. So in OBS, I have a couple of scenes set up. I just have one scene with my video capture device loaded in, and then I have another scene where I have a video loaded in. So the first thing we want to do once we have everything set up is go to Tools, and then we're going to select NDI Output Settings. If you don't see this, that means something with your NDI install didn't go properly. 
So you're going to want to probably redo it again. And we're going to check main output. You can name this whatever you want. I just leave it at OBS. That's perfectly fine. Then I'm going to go into my programs. I'm going to scroll down to the OBS NDI and I'm going to start my virtual input. You can see it doesn't really look like it does anything. But right down here in your system tray, you can see the little NDI. And if I right click on it and I go up to main, which will be the name of your computer, my computer just happens to be called main and I make sure that OBS is checked. In this case, it's already checked, so we're good to go. Now, you may notice you also have some other things here. I can go down here and I can adjust my audio volume up and all that sort of stuff. So if you're noticing that your NDI audio input is low, you can adjust the volume right there, which is really nice. Next, we just open Microsoft Teams and I'm going to go to Meetings. And this isn't the camera I'm looking for. So I'm going to click this little gear button and I'm going to select my microphone, which is the new tech NDI audio. This means that I'm going to get all of the audio that's in OBS. So I want to make sure I have my microphone sources and all that stuff in OBS that I'm going to be using for my Microsoft Teams broadcast. And I'm going to select my headphones. Then I'm going to go down here to camera and I'm going to select new tech NDI video. And it takes a couple of seconds, but there we go. It picked it up. It looks absolutely fantastic. We're ready to go. Now I can go ahead and switch scenes and you can see that it also changes right in Microsoft Teams. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add my image right to this scene so I can show you how it would look if you wanted to have a picture in picture. So I'm just gonna select my existing camera and now I'm going to crop it up and shrink it down to the right size. And I can move it around the screen here in OBS. And when we look at it, it is exactly what we see mirrored in Microsoft Teams. Now I'm just going to click the Go Live button and allow access. And here we are. We are in the Teams main screen. This would be what the folks are seeing live. And it looks absolutely amazing, as you can see. Now if I go down here into the menu and I click the little three dots and I go to show device setting, when we look, my new tech NDI audio is not coming through. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. So let's go into OBS and take a look and see if we can figure out why we're not getting any of the audio. So right here in OBS, I can see that it has video capture device audio and I'm gonna check the source and go down and make sure it's the right one and it is. So as it turns out, it's actually a camera setting and I just changed the setting on my camera and there we go. Now we have video capture device audio and let's flip back over into Teams and you can see we're getting audio in Teams now. Perfect. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another scene here and I'm gonna use a window capture and we're just gonna bring up a browser source here for our window and I want to do this because I want to show you what it's going to look like on your live broadcast when you're looking at the Teams window. You can see it's mirrored. You should not be alarmed by this. This is just how Teams works unfortunately. For some reason they think you want to look at a mirrored version of what is actually going to be produced on the stream. I don't understand it. Nobody's been able to really explain it to me. There are certainly a lot of people that use Zoom these days and Microsoft Teams. It's like a big fight. Which one do you like better? Let me know in the comments. If you're looking for the Mac version of this video, check this one out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.